We all know that the Open Lord is the most powerful governing force of Waterdeep. And by the way, if you haven't seen our episode yet on Laryl Silverhand, the current Open Lord, be sure to check that out. But there is another collection of people that help determine the laws and the edicts of Waterdeep, and these folks are called the Masked Lords. This shadowy group works behind the scenes to help maintain the status quo. I am Ivan of Many Realms, and on this Realms Lore video, Ed Greenwood is here to share everything that you would need to know about the Masked Lords in order to improve your game in Waterdeep. If you're enjoying this series on Realms Lore, be sure to like, subscribe, and share it around. Send it to a GM you love. And if, like the Masked Lords, you would like people to recognize you for a frickin' sweet article of clothing, be sure to check out Ed's shop to get your hands on some brand new and super cool adventuring gear. Also, this is a two-part video. In part two, I ask Ed a whole series of questions to help kind of drill down on some of the details about the Masked Lords, so definitely don't miss that. The number of Masked Lords of Waterdeep, also known as the Hidden Lords of Waterdeep, vary over time and unfortunate events such as the demises seen in my novel Death Masks. But the intent has been to keep the roster over 10 and 6, and usually over 2 score, 40. Further, the intent from McGarren onwards has been that they would represent citizens of Waterdeep from all walks of life, but never dominated by either the nobility or the guilds, so that they could serve as a counterbalancing alternative to the inherent interests of both of those groups. The Lords of Waterdeep are publicly represented by just one Lord, the Open Lord, whose identity the entire city and many envoys, other rulers, and visitors to Waterdeep knows. The Open Lord speaks for the city, receives envoys and delegations from the citizenry and city guilds, and chairs, leads in Waterdavian parlance, they never say chairs, they say leads, almost all formal meetings of the Masked Lords. The mass lords elect in secret, then ask a successful candidate if they want to accept, so the candidate doesn't know that the lords are electing them until the lords have elected them. Then somebody turns around, usually it's the open lord inviting them to the palace for a social function, and then they get taken into a private room and asked, and then if they say yes, then the mass lords formally appoint them. They can dismiss the Open Lord by majority vote, and they first formally did so under the current system in 1489, booting Dagult Neverember from office. The role of the Masked Lords is to debate civic policy and enact decrees, make laws, by majority vote. In an attempt to have them do so, without being personally threatened, blackmailed, bribed, or otherwise influenced by anyone, they wear masks. Their true identities are known to the Open Lord, and they may choose to share those identities with anyone, but customarily don't do so unless they have close friends who are fellow Masked Lords. The Masked Lords meet to debate, decide policy, pass laws, decrees, they call them, but they don't dispense justice on anyone except a fellow Lord, and they are barred by law from directly commanding civic workers or officials. They are forbidden to run city departments or endeavors. Any wealth, city property, and businesses they personally possess, and by city property I don't mean property owned by the city, I mean property within the walls of the city, are their own. They're not perks of their lordships. The office of the masked lord doesn't come with a salary and is supposed to be, quote, distant from opportunities for personal or family enrichment. The heads of the 70 or so, uh, the numbers have varied uh, over the passing centuries, though there was a stable, unchanging 76 for the first half of the 1300s DR. Noble families of Waterdeep are colloquially known as the Lords of Waterdeep. A few nobles may, from time to time, be masked lords, but the Basque lords aren't noble by definition, and no noble by virtue of birth or noble title is automatically a lawmaking Lord of Waterdeep. To be a masked Lord, one must be a citizen of Waterdeep, which means a property owner or registered renter and taxpayer of the city. It is expected that the city will be a masked Lord's usual daily place of residence, but this isn't a requirement. So a particular individual might be both a titled noble lord and a hidden masked lord of Waterdeep, but this is rare, as traditionally the masked lords see themselves as defending the city against the haughty 
misused authority and corruption of foreign nobles. Some masked lords are paupers or have lowly jobs and social status when not wearing their masks. The masks are to conceal their true identity so pressure can't be put on them to vote or speak this way or that. And when the masked lords were founded, Agarin intended their ranks to include representatives from all walks of life and genders, ages, and races to achieve wider experience and views and therefore better governing. Hi, if you're enjoying this video, please leave me a like please subscribe, please hit the bell icon so you'll, you'll get to see all the future videos. And I'd just like to thank you because your support is what makes all of these videos possible. In fact, if you'd like to go to my Patreon and become a protector of the realms, I'd love it. To repeat, no masked lord has a residence or property or a salary attached to their lordship. The open lord whom they elect, gets to live in the Palace of Waterdeep, still known to many as Pier Girin's Palace, after the popular longtime open lord, Pier Girin the Paladin's son, and usually works from offices in it. It's also where the masked lords traditionally meet with the open lord and each other. Masked lords are selected as follows. The open lord approaches candidates privately and as much as possible secretly, from a short list of candidates, they favor chosen by the existing lords in closed door, that is, private from the rest of the city, debate. In other words, it's like a closed membership club with black balls, preference for folk like us, and so on. Just as there are laws established in our real world for how office holders get chosen in extraordinary circumstances, like all the masked lords being wiped out, for example, the Waterdeep has them too. Certain guildmasters, notably the head of the Watchful Order, and noble lords, and the open lord, and the lord mage, that's the black staff of the city, if they've survived too, choose the snort list to repopulate the masked lords. This procedure, by the way, has never yet had to be followed. By noble lords, in this case, the procedure means the heads of 12 specific noble families have the duty to meet and choose. And snortlist is not a misprint or misspeech for shortlist, but a deliberate parody, referring to the secret roster of folks to be approached, alluding to derisive snorts that would greet unpopular choices. The formal term for the secret list of candidates drawn up by the masked lords, by the existing masked lords, excuse me, is our chosen, as opposed to the chosen, who are the special mortal servants of various gods. Accepting a lordship, becoming a masked lord, is always voluntary, but sometimes life applies intense pressure to accept or to decline. It's expected that a masked lord will wear a full head covering, elm like mask of a particular design and minor magical powers at all times when appearing as a lord in public, including open council meetings, and usually at closed council meetings, that is, decision-making meetings of the Lord's Waterdeep, but not wearing a mask doesn't bar a lord from voting or speaking. All nobles of Waterdeep have a legal right, when charged with a crime, to trial by a jury of masked lords or at the noble's request, all of the available mass lords, rather than by a magister. And in practice, but not formally, almost all sentence being transformed into fines of varying amounts rather than any harsher on-the-books penalties. Nobles may also appeal to the masked lords for judgment in dispute with guilds. They also have the right to, quote, prompt, unquote, private audiences with the open lord, save in times of war or dire emergency. And there you have it. That's all about the Lords of Waterdeep, until, inevitably, all of your questions come. Welcome to Realm Speak, and this time around, we're going to be doing this. A famous drow city located in a pyramid cave. So how, before all the gods, would you pronounce that? Well, the answer is... Shindilrin. Shindilrin. So, are you from... Shindilrin? Yes, I am! I'm from Schindelrin! There you go. Schindelrin. Say that three times fast. Schindelrin, Schindelrin, Schindelrin. 
And the drow is now reaching for his dagger. Sorry. You know, the black sheep of a particular noble family who just, okay, it's time for this person to get their codpiece caught in the dung cart, which is a, a local <laughs> saying. <laughs> That's a hell of a colloquialism. <laughs> yeah. It, and, and of course, what it comes from is a famous scene where a, a noble who was portly from too much wine and 